In this video, I'm going to share with you how I started my market stall and seven tips that will help you start yours. I will cover the logistics of how everything came together as well as a few tips and tricks on what I believe increased my sales at each stall. So for a little bit of background, I have been running a market stall for the last 12 months. I have tried multiple markets over my area and I've definitely found one market group that fits my audience and my products really well. I started my business just before I started at the market. That was the best way that I could launch my brand into the community and get immediate feedback from potential buyers. So if you're looking at starting a market stall, the first thing I would suggest you start with is ask yourself, what is my product and who is my audience? Your product could be something that you make by hand. It could be something that you ship in and then resell. It could be food. It could really be anything. But first of all, you need a product and you need to understand who the audience is that's going to buy your product. For example, the products that I sell a hundred percent handmade quilted makeup bags and I also sell other accessories that go with this. I specifically made my brand to feature particular fabrics and particular colors. So a lot of my colors are in the pastel color range. There's a lot of floral and everything is just really unique and unified. So the audience that I would believe would buy my product without knowing any feedback other than my friends and family would be probably the ages between 16 to 35 and generally those who identify as female. So that is my target audience and who I believed was going to be purchasing my product. And the best way to get feedback from that specific audience is find a market group that targets those types of people. Which brings me to tip number two, research your markets because there could be markets that specifically cater to a specific like audience. For example, it could be a night market that runs from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and it focuses on Italian food. So if you bring like quilted handmade makeup bags to a food only night market, although you can potentially get in and you can sell like your craft things and all of that, it's not going to be where your audience is and you're just going to have people take a look at your products and put it down and walk away because they're there for the food. The reason for doing this is you're going off the back of like the event organizers and the market organizers advertising. So they're doing a whole bunch of advertising behind the scenes to your specific target market and who would be potentially interested in buying your product. You want to make the most of it and make sure you're going to the right market. So I'm located in Brisbane, Australia. There is a lot of options for craft markets and I just did my research of it came down to price and what the criteria was for joining. So were they accepting of people that had never had a store before that didn't have any previous uh, selling experience how much did it cost for me to have a store there uh, what their foot traffic is, was like what their social media presence was like you should expect that from the vendor as much as they expect that from you because it's a symbiotic relationship and you're each bringing in an audience to that market applying for markets so you have to put your best foot forward when you're applying for markets and to do this I would encourage you thoroughly understand the key selling points of your product. So it being handmade where you source your material, you could just think, oh, I source it from my friend down the road who has a small business. That's actually sourcing it locally and that's sourcing it within your country of origin. So that's a really good selling point for a market because it shows that you're supporting a community and by people supporting your product and them supporting you, it all like works together. When you've found a market you want to go to, if you go to their website or their social media, media pages they should have a link with an application form and what you will 100% need is your insurance a copy of your insurance there are a lot of different insurance policies out there some markets will require you to have a minimum which is why I recommend researching the market you want to go to before you purchase your insurance because you can get cover right before you apply um, and they might require you to have up to 20 million dollars cover or whatever it might be they might not even require you to have 
have insurance. So if you don't have the budget to have insurance, find a market that fits that for you as well. So you will need your insurance, you will need your key selling points and you will need your social media presence and any photos if you've like set up your store prior to applying and you've set it up in the driveway and you take a few photos, you will need to send that into them as well so they can see what your store looks like. So point number four, think about your stall presentation and the stall layout. This is probably my biggest pointer. When I first started, I literally got everything that I thought I might need. So I got trestle tables, a marquee, tablecloths, I got just shelf displays, everything that I thought I possibly wanted. I went to my front driveway and I set it all up in the driveway and I realized like how much effort it actually takes to make a layout that is going to appeal to people to purchase and you have to also be mindful of how the customer walks through your stall. I decided to have a really relaxed and simple setup. I set it all up and I pretended to be a customer so I had all my products out there. I was like this is how what this person will see if they stand here. This is how I can greet them and I just kind of worked out the layout of my stall. I did upgrade my setup later down the track about six eight months into doing the market stall and I did that because I wouldn't recommend starting out with your absolute dream setup like if you're a small business and you're just starting out this is the first time you're selling everything collectively will add up and you are at that stage I definitely recommend reinvesting in the presentation and setup and constantly reinvesting in it next it's important to think about your point of sale and the cash and how you're going to handle the money so I used a small square reader if you have something like that to accept card payments as well as cash I highly recommend that you'll also need cash on you I kept all my cash in a little money box and I made sure I had enough if people were needing change when someone's going to purchase something from you you don't want that awkward oh sorry I don't take cash or I don't take card can you please pay with cash because it just adds that extra layer although your customers are 99% of the time going to be so fine with that it just takes away that awkwardness next is the stock levels and transport. This is one of the biggest challenges I had when I was running my market stall was the stock levels. I could never determine how many items I needed and to, if I'm being completely honest with you it will take you months to work that out so do not be hard on yourself. With your transport pretty much can fit a lot of like market items in like a typical SUV or like a sedan car. You don't really need like a van or anything like that. I just wanted to throw that in there because you do need to be aware of that when you're planning your market stall layout as well as your stock. And one thing I didn't know about markets as well is they do run bump in time. So that's basically a bump in is a time that you pre book uh, prior to the market. Five, 10 minutes you get allocated and you have to show up at that time to unload your car. And finally, this is a bonus tip that I feel really, really helped with my sales and also with building a community. So, like I said, the point for me doing my markets was to get immediate feedback from my my exact target audience and to just learn a bit more about who was interested in my product. Over 12 months that information is so valuable to me and that's exactly what I got out of it. So a lot of the time I spent talking to my customer if they were open to talking to me and I just gathered like what was selling the most, what wasn't, feedback on how people used it, what they thought etc. I had a little sign on my store itself that said connect with us and it was a QR code that linked straight to my social media profiles particularly my Instagram account and from here I would build my community. I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you have any more questions around market stalls or getting started at the markets please drop them in the comments below this video and I'll be happy to get back to them or potentially do a part two on this video. Good luck getting started. Remember don't be too hard on yourself and it takes time. So all the best with it and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!